Greetings in the excellent name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the New Year Bible broadcast on Church Media TT, the YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe and to click on that notification icon to get all your updates on church activities, lessons, and information that will encourage you to draw closer to God, especially through obedience to his wonderful gospel. Feel free to send us your questions and or comments on the Facebook page, Know Your Bible TT. I am Wendell Paris, Evangelist for the Church of Christ at La Romaine. Our last lesson focused on the gospel in the Old Testament. And one perhaps may have considered how could you find the gospel in the Old Testament? Well, we just did. And we saw many things coming from the Old Testament by which the gospel had revealed unto us in the New. But today we want to focus on the gospel in transition from Abraham to Christ. To that, I would like for us to look in our Bibles to the gospel according to Luke chapter number one. In Luke chapter number one, we said before that when Luke wrote, he wrote to Theophilus, giving an example of the narrative or the story of Jesus. And in the gospel according to Luke, he would have used the lineage to show where Jesus Christ would have come from, how things begun in that particular context. But the Apostle Paul is the one who said these beautiful words in the book of Galatians chapter number 3. Look at Galatians chapter number 3, verse number 7 and 8. He says this, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. To so see where the gospel came from. The gospel was preached before in regards to Abraham. And one might say to ourselves, How can God give that message to Abraham way back then? Well, way back then, as we like to use the term, God calls Abraham and gives him the first gospel that would start the transition from his seed to the, the seed of the Messiah. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3, God called Abraham out of his country, out of his kindred, from his father's house. He said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you a great person and your, the nation is going to be blessed. And all of these promises he made to Abraham, that was the starting of the good news. And when Abraham heard of these things, one thing we learn from that particular account is that Abraham's wife was barren. She could not bring forth any child. So then how could this be possible? How could this great, wonderful news come to Abraham and his wife? As a matter of fact, we learned in Genesis chapter 15 that Abraham thought, well, my wife is barren. She cannot bring forth any children. So perhaps God had in mind my servant Eliezer. I mean, he's the one, perhaps through his offspring, I could be able to bring forth this child. Then God said, no, the seed promised was not going to be from Abraham's servant Eliezer. And then Genesis chapter 16, from about verse 1 to 3, the seed promise was not going to be through Sarah's handmaid because Sarah thought, well, you know, I am barren, but let me give you Hagar. And she gave Hagar to her husband Abraham, and that's how Ishmael was born. But God is saying, no, he's not going to be the seed promise as well. And so while all these things were taking place, God continued to reiterate and make the promise to Abraham that through his seed, all nations of the earth will be blessed. So when God spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapter 17, from verse number 15 to 17, and told him about, hey, you're going to have a son, and that son is going to come through your seed. You know what Abraham did? He laughed. Oh, yes, he did. And certainly, we might have done the same thing. Because why? Abraham is 99 years old. His wife is 89. And you come to tell me that you're going to have a son? Well, he laughed. But then the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 18, 
that when the angels came before they go to Solomon Gomorrah, and they said again, by this time next year you're going to have a son, Sarah laughed, but she laughed inwardly. And then when the angel of God said to Sarah, well, why did you laugh? Sarah said, no, I didn't laugh, but God knows everything. So while all of these things were happening, Galatians chapter 3 verse 7 and 8 was going to come to pass. That's what Paul said. It was going to come to pass because God already planted the seed of the gospel even in the time of Abraham when he called him out of his country. And so in Galatians chapter number 3 and verse number 16, the Bible says, Now to Abraham and to his seed were the promises made. He said, Not unto thy seeds of many, but as of one seed, and thy seed which is Christ. So it is not clear to understand that this gospel that we are trying to uh, really come to terms with has been arranged by God in a beautiful manner that we'll be able to see the transition from Abraham all the way to Christ. So let's ask ourselves the question, who is this gospel really about and why? You see, the Bible says in Mark chapter 1 and verse number 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So the gospel is not about any other religious individual. The gospel is not about any other individual that seem to have the idea that they are representing Christ. The gospel have to be only about Jesus Christ himself. And I want us to understand that Jesus made this statement in the gospel according to Mark chapter number 10 from verse number 28. Listen to what Peter said. Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto you, there are no man that had left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. Hmm, isn't it interesting? But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and, and sisters and mothers and children and lands and with persecutions and the world to come eternal life. If you are considering obeying the gospel of Christ and you have hindrances from family members, you have hindrances from all kinds of different things or all kinds of different situations, hear what God is saying. It does not matter. Once you leave, or once you give yourself to Christ, once you are committed to obedience to the gospel, you will have more fathers and more mothers, a hundred times more. So when you listen to this message, you may be thinking in yourself, if I make this decision to give my life to the Lord, what am I going to have? That's the same question. And God has trained us that we're going to have a family that will be able to take care of his own, a family that is known to be spiritual, a family that is concerned with each member. And even though you go through persecutions with the world to come, there's eternal life. So the gospel is about Jesus Christ. What did he preach? Particularly, what did Jesus preach? Mark chapter 1, verse number 14 and 15. Because if we have to preach something today, it had to be the same thing. He says in Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee doing what? Preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent ye and believe the gospel. What is he doing? He's preparing the people for the kingdom to come. Remember the kingdom has not yet come. Because he did say to them, there will be some of you standing here which shall not taste of death in Mark chapter 9 verse 1 till they see the kingdom come with power. So he knew that the kingdom was in preparation and they had to understand that the kingdom was coming. So Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Repent and believe the gospel. That was the message for people to come into the kingdom. And Jesus said in Matthew 16 verse number 18, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now when he made that statement, he wanted us to understand that the church and the kingdom was going to be used interchangeably to mean one and the same thing. So when God establishes his church, it's the same as establishing his kingdom. When God establishes kingdom, is the same as establishing his church. How do we know that? Just by reading the next verse as well. The next verse tells us when he says, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What is permitted, what is allowed, it is all because heaven, which is the higher authority, has already sanctioned it. So in Acts chapter number one, when the gospel was preached, the church started in Acts chapter number two 
the kingdom started in Acts chapter number 2 and men begin to enter into the kingdom. So it then means, what did he preach? He preached the gospel of the kingdom. It came to pass so that now men and women today can obey the gospel of Christ in order to enter into that kingdom. So this message was for all. This message is not segregated. This message is not set up for a few people. It was for all of mankind. That's the reason why the scripture tells us that when the message came, it came even to the poor. You know, Luke chapter 7 verse number 22 tells us Jesus came to preach the gospel to the poor. To the poor means those who are destitute of wealth, those who are destitute of influence, those who are destitute of the need for have salvation in there. He came to preach to them because a lot of people are being neglected when the world seems to be prosperous and successful, when the world seems to be advancing in many different areas and aspects of life, there are those who are not so fortunate, there are those who are not so blessed to say that they can advance. But hear what? The gospel of Christ is for all. Because the same rich and the same poor, the same middle class and the same whoever of different ethnic background, the same whoever of different color skin, the gospel is for all of mankind. So therefore, there's no discrimination, there's no prejudice, there's no racialism when the gospel of Christ is being preached. It is preached for all of mankind. That's why Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. There's no discrimination. Every person deserves to hear the gospel. Every person deserves to know what Christ has done for them. And every person deserves an opportunity to obey the gospel of Christ. So what did Jesus do when he came upon the face of the earth? He preached the gospel of the kingdom. He preached it in villages. He preached it in cities. He preached among all nations. He said, go out into the world. Because why? The gospel must be preached. So what does he want us to do with his gospel? I use the word us to indicate that those who have obeyed the gospel of Christ, those who are now find themselves in the Lord's church, those who are in the Lord's kingdom will now have an opportunity to take the same message and go out into the world. You see, from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus said to his disciples, when you look at especially the, the last chapters of each of the book, Matthew chapter 28 and, and Mark chapter 16 and, and Luke chapter 24 and John chapter 20, when you look at the last chapters, well, John has chapter 21, but when you look at John chapter 20, we get something coming from these verses. What do we get? Matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20, Jesus said that he has all power and all authority. Go into all the world and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, and with you always, even unto the end of the world. In Mark 16, verse 15 and 16, he said unto them, Go ye therefore and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. You go over into the book of Luke, chapter 24, and verse number 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You go over to John chapter 20 and verse number 21. Jesus said to his disciples, as my father had sent me, even so send I you. And verse 23 he says, as you go, whoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. Whosoever sins you retained, they are retained unto them. How could they remit and retain? Only through the preaching of the gospel. When people hear the message, they can have their sins removed or remitted, or they can have their sins retained upon refusing to obey the gospel of Christ. So, in the simplest form, this is what the gospel have indicated to us. Go, make disciples of Christ, preach and teach the wonderful good news to all nations of the world. Every person must hear the gospel. Every person must believe in the gospel. Every person must repent of their sins, to make a change, change of heart, change of mind. According to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, every person must be immersed or baptized into Christ. Then shall they be saved. Then shall they receive remission of sins. Then shall they continue to be taught. Now, you may not have heard me say the word confess, because I took from Matthew chapter 28, 
and Mark chapter 16 and Luke chapter 24 and John chapter 20, all that Jesus said. When you look at the actions of the apostles, you will learn that someone had the opportunity to confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God in Acts chapter number 8 in regards to the, Philippian, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch. And we'll get to that at a later date. But we want to understand that the gospel is simple. And when we hear the word, believe and repent and follow the instructions that God has given, then they shall be saved, receive remission of sins, and they will continue to be taught. This is known as the transitional gospel, or the gospel in transition from Abraham to Jesus Christ. So in our next lesson, we will talk about the facts of the gospel or the facts pertaining to the gospel of Christ. Because why? There's a foundation laid by which all of us can believe, by which all of us can truly obey. And when we consider that foundation, we learn that there's only one foundation, and that is in Christ Jesus. So if you want to become a Christian, you hear the message, believe in it, repent of your sins, you need also to confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, according to Acts chapter number 8. And also, you need to be baptized, to have your sins washed away. Consider all of these words. Give us a call. Send us your email. Let us know of your desire to be saved. And once again, we want to say thank you for staying with us here on the New Year Bible broadcast on Church Media TT, the YouTube channel. Stay safe. And stay believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. What the Bible tells me, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. That he died on Calvary, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. That he came to set me free in me. So I might live with him in glory. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. What the Bible tells me, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That He died on Calvary, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That He came to set the people free, so I might live with Him in